Well, hey, everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Fish25, and we are here for another ship review. This one I'm actually super excited about. It is the sleek and sexy Banu Defender. And just in time, I think, uh, for Alien Week, and uh, which is coming up in June. And uh, we'll talk about that more later. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. All right, so welcome back to the channel. Thank you for coming back to Fisting Jawa Save the Universe. Uh, again, I am Fist25, and I do uh, a lot of ship reviews here uh, on the YouTube channel. Um, by the end of the video, if, if I'm probably asking again if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the video uh, or to the channel. I would really appreciate it. It does help us out of the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any comments... Uh, please feel free to comment in the comments below. I, I, I do do research on these ships before I make a video, but hey, sometimes uh, even I'm human and I get things wrong sometimes. So with that being said, let's uh, hop up from this beautiful day at Crusader and uh, let's go check out the Banu Defender. All right, guys, there she is, the beautiful Banu Defender. One of the coolest looking ships when it comes to the stance of the ship. Let me actually go into third person mode here because I hate it when the text on the screen just kind of uh, ruins the uh, aesthetic of the ship, if you will. Um, let's go check out this, uh, this ship here. We're on a, a platform out here at Orison in Crusader. And I do have the power for the ship turned on, so that's why you see all the flashing lights blinking and all that stuff. But yeah, look at the front stance of this ship. And we'll definitely take a look at it when we're in the pilot seat. But it has one of the coolest ship stances because those front facing, I don't know the word for them, nacelles, I guess, they... Uh, they angled down and it gives the ship just a just a mean looking stance and uh i think it's i think it's really cool um from the front here you can see there are kind of two bubbles sticking up on either side those are the two cockpits and i say that because uh as a solo pilot you can actually fly from either one um I typically go into the left side because I am obviously from America and we drive our cars on the left side. Uh, the steering wheel is on the left side, but uh, I flew over to Crusader on the right side. So there's definitely options out there for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's take a look around. You can see that there is kind of a unique weapon up here. Uh, and that is, there's four of those. Those are size two guns. And I believe they are called the, the Tachyon Singe Cannons. <coughs> and uh, they are a unique gun to Banu ships. Well, I think they're Banu. I, actually, I think they're, uh, we're going to get into that more later, but they're, what what the Banu have done, even this is a Banu ship, right? And the purpose of this ship is to, well, defend. Uh, it is called the Defender. It is made to defend the Banu merchantmen. So there's certain aspects of the ship that allow for that. We're gonna we're definitely gonna be talking about that. But the Banu are not. <sighs> great inventors they like to actually steal other people's technology and so this is a unique ship because it has Xeon thrusters and um it has tavarin shields and singed tack young cannons which if i recall from the lore um they've they've the band who have had these forever but they probably came from some other civilization that they stole the technology from and then in this particular version it is made for human seating because banu Jian, and humans are all different sizes and different you know we have different stuff so um this ship is made for humans maybe if we play a banu one day in the game we'll, we'll be able to have that ability to have the different banu seating 
So anyway, those are Tachyon Sig Cannons, and as we get into the weapons side and we talk about those, they used to be a lot more unique. They have definitely been called Jesus Beams before. <laughs> um, and there's four of them. So there's one on each uh, side in the front, and there's uh, one on each side in the back. So there's four of those, and they are cannons. They are not repeaters. So you do need to press the fire button um, for each shot on these. I believe they want to try to make these chargeable, but uh, currently they are not charge weapons. Um, I do want to mention those weapons because that's all it has. Because it does have four missiles, four size two missiles. Um, but other than that, that that is pretty much it for the Banu Defender. And overall, I think they are pretty weak weapons. And but we'll get into the stats and stuff then later as we come around we see this amazing paint and and texture and shader uh used for this is the stock paint job too guys this this is amazing looking one of the reasons i really like alien ships and alien week is because the the alien ships in this game are all about curves um I think much more so than the human ships, which are all about angles. So, I mean, take that as you will. But when we do some exterior shots of this ship, I think you will be very impressed. Um, as far as the, we're, we're around the starboard side of the uh, spacecraft, and uh, as far as the landing gear go, you can see that it lands on two front feet. This platform will be undergoing routine elevation. Okay, and then Oris has to interrupt the video, of course. But uh, you can see that these back landing gear are kind of claw-like. Um, they actually look pretty cool, but they are a little bit claw-like. And then they retract up into that... Uh, wheel well or uh, gear well and then the door closes so it is sleek when it flies um, as I mentioned before these engines back here are of a uh, I, well, I don't know if it's the engines or the thrusters the engines might be Manu but the thrusters are definitely a Xeon design um, these don't look like standard thrusters either um so and we just wait till we go into quantum because that's totally yeah, different too um coming around the port side we can see that uh really cool architecture here and design on this brand new ship um a lot of lines a lot of curves um and and, and curves where there don't need to be curves and i think that makes them better we can see how the forward kind of nacelle um, interacts with the, the main body of the ship, the fuselage. And when the landing gear go up, these forward arms or nacelles, whatever you want to call them, they actually raise up a little bit and they move forward uh, to give the ship a very Cylon-like look, to me at least. Um, it's, 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 it's almost misky in the way it's made. Um, so anyway, there's, there's a basic exterior walk of the ship and, uh, let's go ahead and do the interior section. Now <laughs> the interior is actually, you enter the ship from the front of the ship because that's where there's stairs. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, stairs on the ship. So you can see where the little dot is for the ramp access. We're going to go ahead and open that door. Wasn't that cool? The sound from the alien ship is also really, really impressive. So we can see they got the gold here um, for all the steps as well. Now, I did leave the power on, but when you come into the Panu Defender and there's no power on, it is a dark, very dark in here. So... Make sure you close up that door. So you can close the door from either clicking on the door and opening and closing it, or there's a, a little panel over here that lets you open the door or close the door. 
that, unfortunately, besides the two beds, is pretty much the only interactables inside of this cockpit. There really is nothing, or inside the cabin, I should say, there really is nothing else. This ship is made to be a fighter and an interceptor for the banding merchantmen, and it that's what it does. And I think it does it pretty well, but that's what it was made for. Now, this whole look right here is very freaky uh like i said a lot of curves a lot of arches in the designs and almost like a bone structure like almost like a like a kind of looks like a face or actually kind of looks like a pelvis with a spine coming up and uh it's i mean you can look and it looks like bone right but it is very alien in design which again lends uh credence to the cylon aspect now, there is some lights up here, and there's some wiring, and, and uh, however this thing is actually manufactured. All that stuff is up here, but there is nothing to interact with over here. You can see I have F pressed down, and there's nothing happening. So, over here is the left side, or the port side pilot door. Over here is the starboard side. Um, one of the cool differences between the ship uh, with humans and Banu... With the humans, you could you could kind of do either thing from either side, but usually humans, one person will be like the pilot and, and also control the guns and have the other person, the co-pilot, they will work the, the capacitor and the shields and stuff like that. Um, we're going to get into that later when I have uh, somebody flying with me, hopefully Jawa, and we'll see how much they can actually do from the co-pilot seat. I'll probably end up being the co-pilot. Um, there are beds, uh, there's a bed each, which is kind of odd because this is a fighter craft and a lot of fighter craft that are made to be fighters don't actually have beds. Um, I guess like a Mustang Beta would be an exception, but that's a little bit of an explorer. Um, but yeah, it does actually have beds, so you can sleep in here, but it doesn't have any other facilities, right? There's no restroom, there's no... Maybe there's some kind of weird Banu restroom in here, but uh, there's nothing else really in here. Um, so you're not... There, there is no cargo space. So you could definitely do box missions in this ship, but other than box missions and, like, dogfighting missions, there really is nothing else to do it is a, a small two-seater combat ship um, again utilized by the bandage to provide protection and fly alongside the merchantmen um, another cool feature of the ship is it does have tavarin shield technology which is good and bad tavarin shields are really good against ballistics and it, usually when you have two of the tavarin shields together which the ship does have um, it's, I don't want to say it's impenetrable to ballistics, but it's darn near close. There's not a whole lot of leak damage coming from the ballistics. And it's average against lasers or energy weapons. Um, the ship is actually very light. It's made of, you know, alien alloys, but it's a very lightweight hull, uh, which allows the ship to be agile and fast. Um, and uh, what the brochure calls modest accommodations here, uh, which I would say it's very smart. <laughs> um, no SCU here. Crew of one to two. Um, it does have an internal inventory, about 650,000 micro SCU. Um, you can buy the ship uh, in the game uh, for 2.7 million Alpha UEC at Astro Armada at Area 18. Um it actually is a pretty quick ship, as we'll see. I believe its SCM speed is 203 meters a second, maximum speed 1,200 meters a second, uh, which is up there with some of the fastest uh, ships in the game. Um, the standalone price for this ship is $220 uh, US, uh, which is not too high above the original Plague's price uh, in concept, which was 185 Actually, it was 170 and then it went to 185 um, it is time limited sales, um, so you can't just buy this whenever you want. But a good time to buy it is during Alien Week, which follows the Victus launch week. Alien Week is in June, and so we should be seeing this ship go up for sale in June and then again in November during IAE. Um, anything else? The claim time is about 
17 minutes. Expedite is about three, costing you about 4,000 credits. And it is not available in Wing Commander. Okay, so which side should we fly? Left or right? Left or right? Uh, since I flew over here on the right, I'm actually going to fly over on the left. And we just need to kind of walk towards the door, and it opens into what looks like a really cool seat here. And the door will close as we back away. Really cool technology there. As you can see, it's a very bubble cockpit, as we saw from the outside. Um, if we look at the controls here, there's a center stick, and then there is a actual uh, throttle. So it's like a hotas design and a very cool but alien looking seat. So let's go ahead and sit in the seat. So I left that sound there because it is really, really cool. Um, but let's go ahead and I'm going to power down the ship. Well, I thought I was going to power down the ship. Apparently I powered up the ship. <laughs> so let's take a quick uh, cockpit tour here before we take off. Um, visibility is actually really good uh, right in front and, and up. You can see, looking straight up here, it that strut goes diagonally, which is very odd for me. Um, but good visibility to the left, not great to the right, because we are in the left seat. Um, but let's look around the rest of the cockpit. By the way, this seat and the other seat do eject. And I think you're able to eject one seat at a time before the ship blows up. Um, it is Banu Tech. Uh, so these MFDs, I don't... Looks like they do do stuff, but they are not actual MFDs, right? You have one, two, three, four multifunction displays. You have a 2D radar in front of you. Um, and over here on the right, we have cycle lock for um, hostels and stuff. That's pretty nice. Engine on, engine off. Let's get away from that one. Uh, that may be the only thing over here. Um, over to the left. Looks like we have power off. What else do we have? Open exterior and press to unlock is there. Looks like that's about it over there. Um, obviously, we have the eject. And yeah, that looks about it. So... Before we actually take off, I do want to do an exterior pan. Check that out. How mean does that thing look? It actually looks like a bug or kind of like a crab in its in its current stance. But I actually think it looks pretty darn neat um, in this kind of how it how it sits. Um, very bug like, though. Uh, with the cockpits are like eyes. So let's go ahead and lift up. Okay, so we have lifted up as the platform adjusts for its elevation. And you can see that the stance is pretty, pretty aggressive, pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and retract the landing gear. You can see the gear goes up and in, and those forward arms kind of fit in. I want to see that again from the front. You see how they go back and then the gear comes out and we'll switch it over again. Ooh, it looks cool, doesn't it? It looks almost fragile because those arms do stick out so far. And uh, we'll go ahead and reset the view and we'll come into the cockpit. Now, this is a quite a different look sitting in the cockpit. Um, looking over to the right, it's it's not really any better but now you have these these two arms sticking out in front of you so you have a little bit reduced visibility um for, for from the pilot's perspective and you're on the left side so one more time we'll retract the landing gear we'll extend the landing gear and you can see those arms oh that sounds cool those arms kind of make their way to the back and then listen to the alien sounds here Gear 
Sounds pretty cool, right? I think so. Anyway. Okay. Let's, uh, review is reset. Let's go ahead and keep on moving on up and forward. So I don't particularly love, uh, this, this view from the defender, but, uh, it's going to take us a little while to get out of Orison's atmosphere. Um, I do have the engines jumped up a little bit. So let me go ahead and get out of the atmosphere as I climb up and out. And uh, we'll catch you in space. Okay, everybody, so we finally cleared the atmosphere of Orison 150 kilometers up, and we're over here passing by Port Olisar. And, uh, yeah, now take a look at this ship in space. We'll take a little, uh, let me even out the light here. We'll take a quick look around the base paint job. A little bit different in space with less light. Um, but what a beautiful ship. I mean, the lines on it, the designs and the, the alien look of it, the, I think CAG really nailed it. And uh, it just really is a stunning ship. Okay, before we head to a moon or any type of solo dogfighting, let's look at the flight characteristics. We are here in space and we are going SCM speed. The speed is two is indeed 202. And let's uh, crank it up to max speed. And we'll take a look at what those engines look like. Here's after murder on those engines. And as far as boost goes, it does go really quick, actually. So, yeah, I, I mean, we're not quite perfectly straight here, but it does boost up to just about 1200 meters a second. So we'll go ahead and head back down and we'll see if we can see the, any retro thrusters firing. Which I don't necessarily see. But that doesn't mean they're not. It looks like it's just thrusters that are doing that. And not these huge retro engines. But there we go. Um, we're heading back towards SCM speed pretty darn quickly. Um, Let's look at yaw maneuverability. Uh, let's find a point of reference here. Let's we'll just use Crusader. Yaw is actually pretty good, um, and and it should be because the ship is a fighter. Uh, we'll look at roll. Roll. I I would actually expect it to go a little bit faster, but uh, it's not bad. And then we'll go ahead and look at pitch. Again, I would expect it to go a little bit faster being a fighter, but it's not bad. It's actually pretty darn good. Pretty responsive and pretty agile, uh, the Banu Defender. So let's talk about these guns. <laughs> so with the left click of the mouse, you can see our first two guns are firing. The ones on the front of the ship. If I hit the right mouse button, they are the ones in the back. So from a left click... So one's up front, and the ones in the back on the right click, or not in the back, I guess I should say the bottom. If I hit them together, there's all four shots, but I'm holding down the mouse buttons and they don't repeat, right? So that is something you have to take into account, but they are gimbaled. So if I hit G uh, for the gimbal, they do show up here, and then I can... I can move, if I if I go into targeting mode, I can I can move the shots around. Um, notice how much hydrogen we burned just getting out of the atmosphere. That's not horrible, but it's not great. Um, just to put that out there. Let's go see what the performance is uh, here on a moon. 
What do we got? What's what's the nearest one? Daymar. Okay. Let's all go to Daymar. Okay, engage in quantum. And you'll note, here's the crazy green quantum of the Banu Defender. It looks a lot different than any other quantums. The Vanduul kind of use this, but it's red. Um, so yeah, there you go. Cool looking quantum. And we'll turn off our, our engine there and come back in. Uh, let's do something on the light side of the planet. Sure, we'll go to Kudroor. Now, the Banu Defender is actually equipped with a jump drive. So it can completely act independently of the Banu Merchantman. Um, it obviously is probably going to have to get fuel and then maintenance and stuff in the Banu Merchantman's hangar. But... Oh. You know, and it doesn't quite have the range of the Merchantman because the Merchantman's huge and it's going to hold a lot of gas. But the Defender does have its own jump drive uh, that comes pre-installed. So you will have that going for you. Let's head off to whatever these mountains are over here. Give it a little kick in the pants, see if we can get down there pretty quick. Um... What else here? The the Defender is a little more agile and more maneuverable than ships like the Super Hornet or the Saber. Um, but it's not as durable or and it doesn't have the armament or the armor that those ships have. So you're actually trading some agility for armor and, and, and weaponry. So you can see we're moving pretty well through the atmosphere here in Daymar. We're doing mid 400s here through a sandstorm or dust storm. Um, as we turn, pretty good 180 maneuverability. Let's see when we go forward here. Not too bad. We'll give us a, a roll here. Pretty good as well. And we'll turn, we'll yaw there. Yaw to the right, and let's uh, let's do a little loop de loop. Max pitch. Pretty good. So actually, in atmosphere, I mean, I know it's a moon and it's less gravity than say like Hurston or um, Microtech or something like that, but it does do pretty well when it comes to flying in atmosphere. I, I would say. And I don't know what kind of dogfighting mission I'm going to get, but I would say it handles probably better than most, um, as it should, though, because it is a fighter. So here's a roll and full pitch gives ourselves a little bit of boost. And you can see how how fast that boost depletes as we start to black out. And the fuel goes pretty quick, too. So, uh, again, the, here's some boost here. As we really get moving in atmosphere, doing over 700 with boost. And our boost starts to deplete. So I guess it's not too bad with boost, but it's it's definitely not great. Um, I still have the throttle pressed forward. And we're still moving. We're still gaining speed here, even though I'm fairly level flight. Just a little bit of up, uh, up uh, pitch up here. So we're doing 700 plus, almost mid 700s in atmosphere in Daymar. So this ship does actually move pretty darn quick. Looks like 738 is our cap here. All right. So with that being said, let's head out of Daymar because we just saw the atmospheric flight characteristics. And uh, let's let's go find some kind of a mission to do. And we'll check out the dogfighting capabilities of the Banu Defender. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. So here we are approaching an ECN alert mission. And I'm just waiting for the ship to spawn. 
that we have to protect. I'm about a quarter of the way past uh, SCM speed here. There's our ship. Looks like I can't tell what ship it is. There's just way too much glare. And notice I don't have a target status on here, and I'm going to want that up here. So I'm going to go for menu. I say, I guess, target selector. And that's a constellation Andromeda. And we already have our first bad guy. So let's arm our missiles. They're everywhere. Help. Oh, I didn't get it out in time. Um, but we do have our gimbals on, so we'll start shooting at this guy. We do have some speed. This is a Drake Buccaneer. Give it a little boost. Went right past us there. Buccaneer is pretty fast. It does like to joust, but... uh. And this is just mouse and keyboard, guys. Just FYI. Looks like we got the shields down on the buck. Looks like auto gimbals are working as well. Now, the, the thing that used to be um, cool with this, these lasers and these weapons was there was what's called hit scan weapons. And they were, one, they weren't gimbaled. Uh, but, but two, they would instantly, there, there was a, I don't want to say they were a beam weapon. They would instantly hit, if that makes sense. Meaning if you lined up your shot, you got on target, there was, like, it, there was no ammo speed. It was just like an instant hit. Where these act more like an actual laser cannon. These tachyon singes. It is taking forever to kill this buck. I thought the buck was supposed to be a... Uh, Glass cannon here. Attack on okay. So someone attacked me. Uh, we got another buck here. Let's see if we can get a missile lock. Shot a couple missiles at him. Looks like maybe one hit. I ate out the. I have the I did I don't have the setting right for the the gimbals to come on by themselves. For the record, I did not enjoy that at all. And so let's see if we can get this guy a little faster and then we put some missiles on him, because there's another bad guy shooting our target. And I you know, I hate dog fighting with a, a mouse and keyboard, but I figure a lot of you guys are probably starting out and you may or may not have sticks. And I am shooting um, all my weapons at him. And one thing that's nice about cannons is I don't have to necessarily worry about um, the ammo count here because I haven't even hit the max. Of course, I am fighting a fairly maneuverable ship here. And there we go. I finally ran out of ammo here. Anyone else seeing spots? Or is that just head trauma? <laughs> the audio's on point tonight pretty pretty well, at least. But this buck is once again taking forever to kill. I wonder what the Cuddy Black will take. And I am not using my tactics effectively. I will say that right now. Anyone else seeing spots? Or is that just head trauma? Okay, I'm going to increase my recharge rate. Well, you know what? I had everything on boost. That's why. Because <laughs> earlier I was trying to recharge my boost faster. There we go. All right, who's this guy? That's another Buccaneer. 
Looks like the uh, auto gimbals were hitting him there. And he broke off his attack. Although it could have been the other ship attacking him. Now, these bucks, <laughs> they have a lot of laser weapons here. Oh, weapon's too hot. I haven't heard that in a while. Shooting them too much, I guess. What do you guys think so far of the Banu Defender? Um, do you guys use it in combat very often? I know it's definitely better with uh, joysticks. Um, maybe a gamepad as well. I think if we had Tachyon Sings repeaters, I would like this ship a lot more than, than I currently do. Um, but one of the cool options is you can actually uh, change out the guns, the shield. It's completely modular. You don't have to keep these cannons on here. You, you can even change out the shields if you want, if you wanted to use like FR-76s or something. That is completely up to you, how you want to customize the components of your ship. And uh, what a lot of people do um, is they, they will have another ship they favor over the Banu ships, and they will steal the shields from uh, Banu ships. Finally killed that guy. Why is it taking so long? Oh, no, this guy. Oh, it's another Drake Buccaneer. What do you know? <laughs> um so yeah we got Xion thrusters um <laughs> Tavaring shields we got who knows uh Tachyon singe cannons um can you imagine right now if we had these singe cannons if they were like size three and we can line up shots and have them instantly hit. There's no, there would be good range and there would be good uh, time to target because of the ammo speed would be infinite. But yes, the you can see, I think, I think I've demonstrated the agility of the defender really well, especially if you throw in a little boost. I think that would be much more accurate if I grab my sticks, but uh, I actually don't have them set up for 317. Um, I've just been slacking, I guess. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of dogfighting in this patch. You got lucky. Did I get lucky? I like how they talk to you. Adds a little bit of immersion in there. As I'm passing him, he he's taking quite a bit of damage. But uh, his shields are still pretty much up. Again, they're one of the reasons I don't like cannons. Another weapon's too hot. Oh, come on. Let me get him. He ain't moving. Oh, weapon's overheated. Oh, the other ship got him. Good job, Constellation. I like how it's really fighting back, even though it's like, and now it's moving. So anyway, objective complete. That was like, uh, in like 21,000 credits. So not too bad. Uh, if I do say so myself, <laughs> um, I totally forgot to put on my helmet, which is on Orison. So I'll have to go back there, but, uh, there is solo dogfight, guys. I, I, I don't like the Singe as cannons, and I don't know why one of the Singes isn't working right now. Probably because it got too hot and now it's broken. It looks like the front Singes are still working. Because um, I don't, I didn't take that much damage. Uh, let me go ahead and check. Good, good method for testing here. We'll check our guns. 
And, you know, the heart is at 100 for all of them. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe if I cycle power. Okay, looks like they're coming back on if I cycle power to weapons, which is the P key, by the way. So there you go, guys. A very agile fighter can keep up with pretty much anything. Um, but the cannons are slow, um, even though they are accurate with the gimbal. I would say maybe just upgrade to four size three laser repeaters. And uh, I think you'd have better luck with that. Um, so, yeah. Um, what else can I say about the Banu Defender? Um, it is made to take point on uh, different missions um, uh, to really escort and protect the uh, Banu Merchantmen. Um, the shield that is on the Defender is not technically a Phalanx shield um, from the Tavarum, which they are really famous for, um, is combining all their shields together. Uh, but it's just it, it's just a little bit different, but it is of Tavar make. And a little bonus uh, knowledge on you, the name Defender is chosen by individual manufacturers that manufactures the human variant of the Defender in an attempt to appeal to the human market. And the original name from CIG was not the Defender, it was actually the Minuteman, the Minuteman to protect the Merchantman. Um, but the connotation of the word Minuteman really harkens back to the American Revolution, and they did not want to kind of cross pollinate that word with uh, this ship. Um, they wanted it to be definitely unique, definitely alien. So there you go. Solo dogfight complete. Now we're going to take a look at the loadout. Uh, at Urkel.Games of the Banu Defender. <clears throat> We're going to take a look at the uh, ship brochure and the Q&A. So all that's coming up. Thanks for watching so far and stay tuned. All right, folks. So here we are at Urkel.Games um, with the now infamous Banu Defender up here. Um, let's take a look at its stock stats. <laughs> Its role is a light fighter. Um, it is a combat ship, a, si a size two, apparently. Um, crew size one, but I definitely could have two in there. Um, inventory capacity point, 6.5 SCU. That's like personal inventory. That's 4,000 hit points on the on the body. Um, <clears throat> 50 on the nose for a total of 14,000. That doesn't make sense, but okay. Definitely not the most durable or heavily armored fighter out there, so make use of its maneuverability. Um, we already went over the speed and uh, SCM speed 203, max speed 1200. Uh, pitch, yaw, and roll. 42 degrees for pitch and yaw, so not horrible, but not the best. And actually a pretty decent roll of 128. Um, <clears throat> here's a big difference with the Panu Defender here. Um, it is made to have range. So the hydrogen capacity is 430,000 liters and the quantum field capacity is 2,750 liters. Um, you'll see it when we get to quantum drives, it has a size one quantum drive, but basically everything else is like size two on some of this stuff. So... This ship is unique in that it has a size two shield, size one quantum drive, but the fastest size one quantum drive, you're still good with this ship to go to Microtech. Um, you're still gonna have plenty of gas left over. So yes, you can use that VK-00, the fastest size one quantum drive in the game, the military drive, um, or you could stay with the beacon, the military grade C that it comes with. We'll get to that in a sec. Um, let's look at damage here since this is a fighter. With the four uh, gimbaled size two Singe two tachyon cannons, um, it does a total of 292 DPS, which is pretty abysmal, um, if you ask me. The burst damage is 381. Again, very abysmal, but high alpha damage, so 440 alpha damage. Um, but the DPS is just not good. I think you're going to do better off with a laser repeater. Uh, on this ship until the hit scan weapons are fixed with these things twos. Um, 
if we look at shields, we do have uh, one size two Sukaran, which is the Tavarin shield. It is a military grade C shield. And I am actually recommending you keep this on here. Um, yes, it's a, it's a grade C, so it's not the highest amount of hit points. However, this shield does really well against ballistics. So, or at least it's supposed to. So, you should have better protection against ballistic fire on you, um, but it's just average against uh, energy weapons like lasers. Um, that being said, uh, 7,500 hit points with 183 hit point a second recharge time. Um, if we look at power, you can see it's actually almost maxed out. This I do not recommend. Um, and you you saw that our our uh, lasers and the dogfight were getting hot as well. Um, and I. I believe that it's linked to power and not necessarily cooling because we have plenty of cooling 109 out of 560 our coolers are fine um but the power yeah it's on it's almost full the em is actually really high 25,000. um so you're not going to be super stealthy in here even with stealthy components and it's not designed to be a stealth ship uh, uh anyway now, if we go ahead and take our capacitor all the way up to full weapons, our sustained DPS is 338 and our burst is 381. So, um, yeah, not super happy with any of that stuff. Now, for the weapons, like I said, keep in mind, it's 292 DPS. Um, if we just get rid of our gimbals here and we put uh, 337 Panther repeaters on this guy, um, I think I just think it's going to be better off. Um, I think you'd have a better time using the maneuverability of the ship. Oops, I didn't mean to put an attrition on there. Um, and I just I think it's going to be a better fighter overall. That's my recommendation. You do what you want. It's your game. But now our DPS with four size three guns is six hundred and eleven. And look at our power drop. It's almost down to half. So. The Panthers, they're going to give you more DPS, a little bit less alpha damage, um, but you're going to be firing more, firing faster. You're probably going to get more shots on target. Um, now, these are not gimbaled, so you're going to have to be a more accurate with your shots. Um, going over to Missile Rex, um, it comes with two size two mi uh, missiles, so a total of four. Um, I, these missile launchers are bespoke, so you cannot change them out. Um, but with the missiles themselves, I would probably go with a mix of electromagnetic. Um, well, yeah, I guess you could go with a bullet too, just more damage and it's infrared. But I like to go with a mix of electromagnetic and cross-section personally. So uh, my recommendation is two Dominator 2s and two Strike Force 2s. Like I said, the shields I would leave alone just because of the ballistic protection, but if you wanted to, you could go through an FR-76 on there. Uh, you would get more hit points. Um, but one of the downsides of the FR-76 is that um, it does take longer to reboot, um, which is pretty much the only... Uh, <clears throat> it's more hit points and it takes longer to reboot from distortion damage. Um, so it's one of the reasons to keep the Sucre on. Uh, besides the ballistic protection, it's faster to reboot. It does take less damage of distortion to shut them down, though. So keep that in mind. There's a little bit of a trade off there. And they do have overall lower health. Or the shield does. For the power plants, if you're going to stay with tachyon cannons, um, I don't know. It comes with an ion burst, um, 2314 power. You could go up to the White Rose, the, the best civilian, um, but I would highly recommend the JS-300, uh, which it's a more expensive, but it provides uh, 1,300 more power units, <laughs> power per second than the uh, civilian side of the Ion Burst. But if you go with this build that I'm building out right now, you don't need it. A power is at half, you're fine. As far as the cooling goes, uh, right now, again, coolers don't have much to do with the game. So I would leave these military grade B polar coolers on there. And uh, as far as quantum drives go, this is one of the ships that's a recommendation to keep the stock quantum drive. The beacon 
Military grade C is the third fastest size one quantum drive in the game. Um, it is 253,000 kilometers a second. The only thing that gets faster is the Siren and then the VK00, which is a little bit faster. So if we go from the beacon, uh, from the longest distance in the game, Microtech to R-Corp, uh, takes you six minutes and 22 seconds. Um, if you want to spend the money for the VK00, it's six minutes and nine seconds. Can you wait 10 more seconds and save all that money? I bet you can. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Uh, let's see. Before we do the paints, let's go ahead and toss our stock items to the car, our non-stock. And we're going to see that we're not changing power plants. Okay, so for the missiles and the guns, um, you can get... Uh, Let's see, the Strike Force 2s, you can get everything at Area 18 um, for 36,212. And at New Babbage, you can get everything as well for the same price, 36,212. Um, which is the cheapest for the 337s. The, and the missiles only get cheaper if you buy them at Port Olisar, where they're just a few credits cheaper. So it's not even a big deal. So that's how much it costs to upgrade the Bandu Defender with my recommendation. A lot more DPS on that one. Okay, so let's talk about paints. There are three different types of paints for the Bandu Defender. The first one is the Defender Platinum livery, which uses several shades of silver to accentuate the Defender's unique look. Um, instead of that all that gold trim that we had on the stock model, uh, the platinum comes with the silver. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> um, I don't believe they sell the platinum anymore. Um, I believe it was exclusive uh, to Alien Week of 2951, um, which was last year, 2021. So I'm not sure if they're going to sell it in 2022. It would behoove them to do that, but we'll just have to wait until June. The second uh livery for the banner defender is the polar livery and this is a polar livery like everybody else's polar livery so it's got that the white uh camouflage look to it uh white and grays and it was specifically designed again for the 2951 international aerospace exposition the last and final paint for the uh banner defender is the stormbringer livery um it kind of blends. It's the same as every other Stormbringer. It blends the blue and the black and with some white accents in there um, to give the ship kind of an electric new look. Um, let me know what you guys think about the Stormbringer and the Polar. Um, I believe the stock livery is just gorgeous, and so is the Platinum. But those are custom liveries just for the ship. They're not the generic Polar and, and uh, Stormbringer livery. And that's it, guys. That ends the loadout section um not much else to say i'm glad it was short glad it was sweet let's move on to the brochure okay so here we are at the uh, banu defender brochure um it's not your typical brochure um, but here it is the universal digest of 2947 um, on defense see the fighter protecting the tranquil banu merchant culture um and apparently a mammoth spider was discovered on uh, Ryla 5. Um, but there's a picture of a bunch of brand new defenders all kind of flying around. And that's a big picture of a Banu. That's what the Banu look like. Kind of like a little bit like Groot, but they're purple with green eyes. And uh, notice the ship um, has a lot of aspects of the, the kind of bony looks of the Banu. Um, not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying it, it the aesthetic of the Banu kind of matches the ship. Uh, Fossa crumbs spray from Lin Sul's mouth as he barks at his team. His reptilian hand lazily scrapes the bottom of the treat bag while he shouts, oblivious to the vol volume of his voice. Although Lin's tenor may deafen my human ears, his fellow Banu are not so sensitive. Cries reverberate from the various merchant stalls in the Yulin system. But to the Banu, whose species lacks an outer ear, all this clamor barely registers. Lin's joints groan as he eases onto the cargo container that's yet to be loaded. The average lifespan for the Banu ranges from 45 to 55 years. 
So at 43, Lin is in the waning years of his life. But that life has been prosperous. The Banu defined legacy by wealth accumulated over a lifetime. As the wealthiest Banu in the Protectorate, Lin is a living legacy. Lin pats an empty area on the shipping container. I take a seat and ask Lin how he rose from a lowly apprentice to an Esosuli, or guildmaster. I saw opportunity, so I took it, he bellows. The opportunity Lin saw was the spike in raids on frontier systems like Lear. The young Lin spent his savings on his first combat ships. There was an immediate demand for Lin's security suli, or guild, and he's been in business ever since. But what will happen to Lin's suli when he's gone? Banu aren't tied by blood. Rather, their suli is their family. When an Esosuli dies, so does the clan's loyalty. I pose this query to Lin, and he laughs. Replace me? He shakes his head. No one replaces Lin. Unfortunately for local merchants, this may be true. Okay, this is a cool picture of the, it's called Suli Ties and the tree system. Um, curious about the evaluation Suli, I travel to Trees to find where the prolific Lin got his start. Like all Banu children, Lin was sold to an evaluation Suli shortly after birth. His time there was not only spent gaining an education, but also undergoing a series of aptitude tests to determine his strengths and weaknesses for potential future employment. At the age of six, Lin underwent the formal testing, the results of which are publicly posted so other Suli may purchase young Banu as indentured apprentices. Lin, who placed top in his class in coordination, spatial relationships, and tactics, expressed fondness for his evaluation Suli. When I arrived, however, I found ramshackle remains of Lin's former guild. The closest evaluation Suli was run by Esosuli R. R. E. R. E. Hul. Like everyone else I spoke to, R. E. had never heard of the guild that evaluated Lin many years ago. Sad as it may seem, that is the way of the Banu. Their short lives and detachment to the from uh, to the past makes it impossible to form business. Businesses and deals that span generations. Inside Ari Suli, I spot a young Banu tinkering with a puzzle box in the corner. I recall Lin mentioning a similar puzzle game from his childhood that was used as part of his aptitude training. It seems that while names and places may change, some Banu traditions remain the same. The picture here is armed and ready with uh, the Banu Defender and its super cool stance there, the aggressive stance. Too many in the UEE. The Banu are not known for being combative. The Protectorate lacks a standing military. That doesn't mean the Banu don't fight. Lin Suli specializes in armed security and protection details. But by owning one of the largest defender fleets in the Protectorate, he's able to scale his teams and stay affordable to merchants of all levels. With the UEE invading Vandal space to the north, Vandal clans have increased attacks in the southern systems. Though some Banu have formed trade agreements with a few Vandal clans, most merchant ships are still at risk from Vandal raiders. That's where Lin Suli comes in. When asked what he would do if the Banu Protectorate hired his guild to fight, Lin quips, Depends on the price. For the Banu, anything can be bought, even war. <clears throat> uh, this is a picture of the Oxus composite hull making it super light. Um, number two is the countermeasure launchers. Um, these are the, this is in the backside. Uh, number three, the main thruster. Number four, the missile hard points uh, in the undercarriage. Distinct designs. To understand the defender's rise in popularity, I wanted to get a closer look at the ship's specs. Lin directed me to Esasuli Janu Monli, who specializes in building defenders for both Banu and human operations. In a stark contrast to human industry, the Banu don't copyright ship designs. Any individual manufacturer can get copies of blueprints and are free to tweak ship models while selling under the same name. The shape, hull, and design remains con constant across all Defender models, but no two manufacturers will sell completely identical ships. Case in point, Janu created a model of the Defender designed specifically for human pilots. In fact, Janu originated the Defender name in an attempt to appeal to the human market. Thanks to Lin's referral, Janu showed me a blueprint of their versatile fire, fighter. 
Although the Defender had been around since humanity's first contact with him in 2438, it's now 2952, so that's a long time. The ships have changed since then. Since the Banu have traded heavily with other species for hundreds of years, the Defenders have a patchwork design that incorporates elements of tech from other cultures. The shields, for example, were Tavarin in design. The thrusters came from Xi'an. This approach highlights one of the key points of Banu engineering. If this technology works better for the overall design, the Banu will use it. Slash steal it. <laughs> uh, with 28 meters in length and 18,000 kilograms of mass, the Defender is... Ion... Uh, Ion... Uh, whatever that word is. Oh, geez. Longer. I thought that was an I. The Defender is longer and sleeker than the Gladius. The four Singe Tachyon cannons are loaded into gimbal mounts. They are instrumental in fighting off raider attacks. The fighter combines elegance with strength, as seen in the polished design and mixed thrusters. The interior fits and sleeps a crew of two with enough room to access components and the pilot and co-pilot's cockpits. The Defender does its best work, acting as part of a multi-crew escort flight uh, escort fighter for ships in need of protection, like the Banu Merchantman. Lighter armor and heavier and heavier Tavarian shields keep the fighter light and fast, which is ideal for quick maneuvering during combat. Where she actually puts the uh, hyphens here can mesh up a little bit. Uh, the Defender Specs, which there's actually no specs on this page, just what things are there. The pilot, pilot so apparently the co-pilot's cockpit is on the starboard side. Um, some of the weapons, the entrance, uh, sleeping quarters, ship storage... Um, main storage sleep and more sleeping storage. <clears throat> the journey inside with its emphasis, uh, emphasis on combat, the defender has a minimal cargo space and small sleeping quarters. For this reason, defenders are best flown as part of a fleet or for shorter journeys. Engines and components are shielded by cascading spinal shutters. Doors and shutters are molded into the walls to create a smooth, seamless aesthetic while still providing operator access, which is Part of the reason I like the ship is the curves. When asking about the origin of the glowing stones embedded in the walls, Janu simply shrugs and explains that he purchased them from a mineralist. While the same behavior from a human manufacturer could easily be construed as keeping a trade secret, the Banu have no such hangups. As a culture, they don't keep historical records, believing that the present is far more important than the past. Line of Fire while every manufacturer claims their product is the best uh, on the market, I wanted to verify those claims by speaking directly to a Defender pilot. So I returned to the airfield and met with Lynn's most experienced pilot, Kempo Delmi, and Kempo's co-pilot, Aaron Toole. I asked Kempo if the Defender lives up to Janu's hype. The Defender is swift, deadly, all flee in terror. Proud, he and Aaron give me a tour of the inside of their ship. The most noticeable difference between Defenders, built for the Banu and Janu's design for human operators, is the pilot and co-pilot seats. In the Banu model, the two seats have isolated functions, so responsibilities cannot be shared between pilot and co-pilot. As with their Sulis, the Banu pilots prefer to specialize in one task. Human pilots, however, prefer flexibility and an ability to assign functions as needed. While Kimpo's conviction was almost enough to convince me that this fighter is fierce in flight, I still needed to see the Defender in action. I boarded the Merchantman Lin's Suli. Well, I boarded the Merchantman Lin's Suli, was hired to protect, and set sail for Lear. I did not need to wait long. Immediately upon exiting the jump point into Lear, our convoy is surrounded by a small raiding party of Vanduul blades. A chill runs down my spine at the sight of the Vanduul Raiders, but the ship's captain calmly requests a comm link to the Vanduuls. No worry, she tries to reassure the crew and me. I trade with Vanduul many times. No problem here. It makes them sound like they're possibly Asian there. But we clearly do have a problem when the Vanduul respond by opening fire. The floor beneath me sways as the engines take a hit. It appears the Vanduul intend on immobilizing our ship, which will make it easier for them to board and loot our cargo of ore. After they kill us, of course. I don't have long to ponder my demise as Lin's defenders engage the Vanduul. The blades swivel their attention to the new threat, 
but their ammunition fails to penetrate the defender's Tavarin shield in the initial flash. The defender's missiles pick off the blades, lighting up the starry sky outside the windows. As the remaining Vanduul clan hightails it out of the system, the merchant crew standing behind me bursts into cheers. The trip concludes without further incident to the planet of Maya. Safely on the ground, I join the merchantman captain as she thanks Kempo and the other pilots. After the skirmish, I am profoundly aware this story would have been much different. Uh, would have a much different ending if it weren't for the Bandu defenders by our side. Oh, this is one of my favorite pictures of the defender, or of the merchantman. Sorry. Open for business at the Maya Market. On Maya, I have my first contact with the outsiders. The reclusive society refuses to purchase goods from human planets but they seem to be content trading with Banu merchants. I greet one of the outsiders as he trades supplies for the Banu's ore, but he doesn't acknowledge my presence. I can only assume he doesn't trust a human outside of his cult. In the skies, Lin's security team rotates patrols, although they may have uh, little to fear from the outsiders. The Banduul are another matter. On break, Kempo and his co-pilot lounge in the shade of their ship. The planet side stops are the fleet's only time to rest. Once the Banu merchants finish their deals on Maya, they'll stop at the other two planets in the Lear system before moving on. These mining planets have not been terraformed, so they're in constant need of oxygen, food, and other supplies. That makes the merchant ships who frequent them targets for raiders. Fortunately, the merchantman and has the defender to keep these raiders at bay. And that's it for the, the Banu uh, defender brochure. Uh, in the next issue, the Origin Jumpworks redefines luxury yet again. Okay, so uh, I'm going to quickly move on to the Q&A. We'll go over that real quick. And then, uh, yeah, the, there is no commercial. So we'll hop into uh, Jawa and I both uh, flying the Bandu Defender together uh, to see what multi-crew looks like. And then we'll do the chase camera dogfight. Okay, so here it is, uh, the Q&A for the Banu Defender. Um, yeah. <clears throat> will you do? Will you address the issue with cockpit visibility? The short answer is yes. The long answer, um, they, they reference the town hall a lot here, um, which the video is in here if you go to the Banu Defender's Q&A page. Um, <clears throat> they... It looks like they're going to work on it at some point, um, which is a typical CIG answer, but uh, coming soon, TM. Uh, will the front prongs fold back during combat to offer a better view forward? Um, they offer a lot of movement and flexibility, so it's certainly one of the likely avenues for improvements to the visibility we're exploring, possibly by angling, angling them down outwards more. How will the range and mobility of the Defender compare to other fighters? Well, we've already talked about that. Um, they are made to escort merchantmen, so they need to have longer range. And they do. They have more fuel. Are the four size 3 gimbal mounts, including the size reduction for the gimbal, or not? Um, so they're size 3 hard points, guys, and... When you put a size 3 gimbal on it, it reduces the size of the weapon down to a size 2. Can the Defender mount fixed size 3s? Yes, it can. Does it come with a jump drive standard? Yes, it does. Will it be possible to store a Defender inside a Merchantman's cargo hold? Well, we don't know this for certain yet, but um, the Merchantman's being built this year in 2022, and it hopefully will come out around uh, IAE or CitizenCon. And it looks like it will be able to fit a Banu Defender in its hangar. Um, how does Banu weaponry differ from other weapon types? I think this answer is probably out of date. Um, we know the hitscan weapons of the attacky on Singe cannons are supposed to be uh, no travel time for the ammunition. It's just supposed to instantly hit, but do less damage. So there is a trade-off there. But they don't work like that now. Um, so I no idea when that's actually going to happen. In terms of combat capability, how does it compare to ships like the Super Hornet or the Sabre? Well, we talked about this in the video as well. The Super Hornet and the Sabre are not as agile as the Banu Defender. However, they are 
they have more weapons um, sometimes, and they are hmm, more durable. I guess would be the, more durable because they have more armor, um, but they're not as fast and they're not as agile. Can the ship be used effectively in combat by a solo pilot? Yes, you have seen that in the video. Will I have cargo space? No. Although you can still do box missions. You cannot. There is no cargo space to load cargo in. Since it's a nimble ship, where does it compare to other ships like the Sabre, Buck, or Car 2 Wall? Well, the, nothing compares to the Car 2 Wall. The Car 2 Wall is the most nimble ship in the game. Um, but again, trade off is it's not very durable. Um, we fought against Buccaneers and we kept up with them pretty well. Um, so it makes me think we're definitely going to be able to keep up with the Sabre. Uh, since we seem to get access to most components in the ship uh, from the inside, does it have the benefit of easier maintenance over other fighter ships? Well, there was no components on the inside that we could see or access. But it looks like they're saying, yes, internal access to components will be integral and very important to the ship, so we don't have to go EVA to go fix the Defender. Do the shields perform better because of their Tavaran origins? Yes, they are better against ballistics. How good is the ship's range? Um, we've already talked about that in the loadout section. Um, it can use the fastest size one quantum drive in the game and still have fuel to spare, going from Mark Corp to Microtech. Does it come with an ejection system? Yes, it does. Um, and they do eject independently. Features like the Xeon engine, Tamarin shields, and Tachyon guns are discussed as central features of the ship. Will these be hull locked like the nose guns of the Vanguard? No, you can swap out anything. How does it perform in atmospheric flight? Well, you saw the video. Um, I thought it handled pretty darn well. Not as good as in space, but nothing does. Is the ship intended to be used with long range and high damage weapons? I think that was the point of the, uh, the hit scan stuff with the, the weapons was that they were fairly long range, um, but they weren't necessarily high damage because I did use them in like uh, 3.8, 3.9, and they were pretty cool. Why does the ship only have one size one shield listed and only one? So oh, that was a mistake on CIG's part. It does have one size two shield and two size one power plants. Uh, will there be a size three and two versions of the Tachyon cannon available in, when the ship is flyable? Um, that was the intention, but uh, currently you cannot buy a Singe Tachyon cannon anywhere in the game. Um, so if you have a, a Banu ship or something that uses Singe Tachyon cannons, the, you, that's what you got. Um, same same with the shields. If you have like a Prowler or you have a Talon or you have a Banu Defender that use the Sucuron shields, that's it. You can't buy a Sucuron shield in the game right now, and um, at least to my knowledge, you can't. And so if you wanted to use them on other ships, you would have to swap them out from uh, those ships to the ship you want to swap them out. And that's about it. There is some recommended viewings uh, and around the verse, the town hall and stuff like that. And then there's like the, the ship page itself. And that is it for the uh, Bandit Defender uh, Q&A. Um, next up, we're going to do some multi-crew, uh, two people uh, in the Defender. Then we'll do the Chase Camera Dog fight and then we'll wrap up the video with final thoughts. Thank you for watching so far and we'll see you in the next segment. All right, folks, so welcome back to Fisting Java Save the Universe. As you can see, we are in the Banu Defender, and Java Sparky is the pilot on the left side of the ship. Uh, we are outside of Port Olisar. I am going to go ahead and, and be the co-pilot um, and just kind of show you what that's like when you have um, a, a pilot in either one of the seats and then a co-pilot. Um, so, Java, can you take us out of Armistice, please? So as you guys can see on my HUD, I have the standard kind of co-pilot set up here. Um, I have the flashing gear symbol. I don't have any hydrogen or quantum fuel showing. No countermeasures showing. Um, but it looks like the gauges are working. Uh, I'm going to have Java take us out of armistice here uh, so we can uh, test the weapons. Um, I cannot go into missile operator mode. 
So the co-pilot here might just be... There we go. Joa, can you... Uh, can you f just fire the guns? Okay, so Jawa has gun authority. Do you have missile operator mode authority, Jawa? Don't shoot one, just speak. Earth to Jawa. Oops, sorry, I was on mute. Um, okay. No, I do not have... Uh, I can't go to missile operator mode. Really? Yeah. Now, if I hit uh, my um, to go there, um, and nothing pops up, it's a, it's a blank screen on my right. Interesting, because nothing pops up for me either. So, um, this feels like a standard co-pilot in any other ship, but I probably do have missile operator mode authority. So let me go ahead and find us a mission, buddy, and we will okay. uh, make sure to go ahead and take all arms. Yes, sir. And uh, we will check this out. See, see, kind of how it works. All right. Well, I have a tracker training mission because we're in Crusader. <laughs> I haven't done much dogfighting in this new patch, and this is, I think, the first time guys like Jawa has ever flown the Banu Defender. So we'll get his opinion as well. Cool. Um. Yep. Asteroids surrounding Yella. I'm going to go ahead and share the mission with you, Jawa. Hey. Okay. Khalil Burke. Sounds like he plays hey. for the Oakland Raiders. Okay. <laughs> Except Contract for the shared. part. Your left bracket to accept. Yes. Okay. Now. All right, buddy. Take us to Yella. Okay. We got a cool view of the uh, of the defender here. Looking good. Oh, you've never seen Quantum in this ship, have you? Nope. Ooh, it's a little different. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, wow. Oh, it's green. It is green. Yeah. Yeah, it is green. <laughs> Everybody can see you in your armor right here. So, yeah. Finally, the uh, Nightfire armor is no longer pink. Yes. Whoa, okay. That's a little too far. Yeah. All right. Let's see, come on. Where is that target? Looks like he's on the backside of Yella. Okay. So, actually, I'm going to go over here and try. I don't know if I have it tracked. Scenario. So, since yeah. you are not super familiar with the Bandy Defender, and. Uh huh. You haven't watched the video yet because we're in the process of making it. Making it, yep. Um, it is a very, very agile ship. Well, I don't know if I okay. use two varies. It's a very agile ship. However, it is very lightly armored. Oh, but it, glass it, cannon. No, nah, not necessarily. It does have a size two Tavarin shield. Okay. Meaning, meaning it's actually really, really good against ballistics. Okay. Oh wow! But it's but cool. it's only average against energy weapons. Okay. But it is it is a size one fighter. It's a size two fighter. So it's a smaller fighter with a size two shield. Okay. All right. So All right. keep in mind those cannons that you're going to be shooting. They take right. a, a click for each each time you shoot them. There's four right. of them, and they are right. on gimbals. They are size twos. This thing also does have four size two missiles, which I'm going to try to use. Um, okay. Yeah. So you, I, I was doing some solo fighting earlier, and I was able to actually turn in and, and keep up with Buccaneers. Okay. Pretty okay. easily. You know those things like the joust and stuff. So Oh yeah. Yeah. And this ship actually is fairly quick. It's it's max speed is twelve hundred. Um but okay. it, and its okay. SCM's just a little over two hundred. So right. uh, that's prime right now. But I was good at flying fairly quick uh with this ship. It does uh -huh. have a, a pretty good roll, a, a above average yaw and, and pitch. So it's not quite a gladius, but uh Right. It, it definitely kind of keeps keeps up with it. It it's meant to be more agile and less durable, less armored. Okay. And this is the ship that 
is made to escort and protect the Banu merchantmen. Oh, okay. So hopefully this guy's not in an yeah. asteroid. Uh, he's not in that asteroid. He's 10 clicks away. So I don't even have target authority. Yeah. I see somebody on radar. Can you target him? Oh, nope. Just got somebody. There you go. Okay, there he is. Oh, we got a couple. Uh... <laughs> there goes all the countermeasures. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I do not have missile operator mode authority. Oh, you don't? I do not. So maybe you do. I don't know. You're a little too close for that. So you're going to have to shoot him the old-fashioned way, my friend. He's not we too happy that dog with me. Fight going. Yeah. Ooh, nice shot. He does have a friend behind him. Ooh, that's a gladius, isn't it? Ooh, there he goes. Very nice. Is that an M50? Probably. It looks like it. There you go. He's to your starboard. Down. Oh, yeah. You see him. He's quick. Yeah, but you're pretty darn agile, right? Yeah. He's not too happy with me. Oh, is he cursing you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you almost got him. He is hanging in that fight much more than that Gladius was. Oh, a piece of him broke off. You almost got him. You are so close to him right now. You got it, Joa. You can do it. Ooh, he took that one hard. That one, too. Uh, this M50, what is it? He is hanging size in there. Size three shields? <laughs> I, was, I was saying that with those bucket ears yesterday. <laughs> They were taking forever to kill him. There, there you go. All right. Nice job. You want to take us back to PO, buddy? Yes, sir. What we do you know. think about uh, the, the Banu Defender here? I, I liked it. I, I liked how I could keep my nose on him. Um, you know, I love my Gladius, as you know, but sometimes uh, the M50s can just outrun your nose. Yes. So, yeah, that that was that was nice. So you would agree that it's pretty darn agile? Oh, I, I would totally agree. Okay. And I, I think now, what do you think about putting four size fixed size threes on there like repeaters? Yeah. Yeah. Since, because okay. it, yeah. at least for now. Um, so so these weapons that are on here, these uh when they first the came cannons? out. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, the tachyon singe cannons that are on there. Um, they were the hit scan weapons where they had pretty much infinite speed. 
Oh, okay. Like as soon as you clicked and they were they were in your target, it would hit. There was no oh, wow. There oh, was, there yeah, was there, no delay. There was no delay. Oh. You weren't shooting any type of projectile. It was almost like a beam weapon that lasts for an instant. Oh, okay, okay. And they were super powerful. And they were referred to by other people as Jesus beams because you could just <laughs> light people up a few times and boom, they were done. And they were fairly long range, so you could do this at range too. Right on. Um, they have since since the weapons nerf of uh, uh, long patches ago, they have uh, been nerfed and and I think they're, they said CIG said they're still working on them, but. Mm. That was a long time ago, so we're still waiting on that to happen. Um, right, right. But I think once that does, I would keep them on here. But for now, in three seventeen, I think I would replace them with laser repeaters, and uh, it also lessens the power requirement. So, uh, all in all, better for the ship. So, right, yeah, I do like running attritions on my um, on my gladius, though. That's I. I like running those. Yeah, I wish I wish they uh, they still worked better when they were hot. Yeah, but uh, yeah, for nine tails, <laughs> that's what I was using. So John was going to go ahead and land, guys, and uh, he's going to refuel, repair, rearm, and I am going to go hop into the Pisces, and we are going to do a chase camera dogfight because I don't think uh, what we did here really did it justice of the the cinematic nature, and plus I'll probably play some dubstep or something so um we'll we'll watch jawa land here and we will critically judge his ability to fly the banner defender feel free to make fun of him in the comments section below <laughs> how do you like the look of the defender once the gear's out i mean oh yeah it, i do too I it do looks too. like a rabbit crab but it is super cool look at that reliant down there it looks like a tana yeah. it's, oh, it's, there are some people that really, really love that ship. I tell you. Yeah, and he just landed on my. No, close to it. <laughs> close, but not so much. Are you gonna do an auto landing? No. You normally do a PO. No, I don't. There <laughs> you go. Well, you used to. Touchdown. All right, well, now guys. Now saying that I'm being impact. Well, it's because you were off the you were off the mark. Land oh. right in the middle of the six there. Pro tip, guys, when you land at PO, land right in the middle of that yellow area, and uh, you should be okay. Because if you're off even a little bit, it kind of thinks it puts you into griefer mode. Yeah. Eh, you're close. Yeah, yeah, I don't have the warning anymore. All right. All right. So we'll, we'll change over to uh, Chase Camera, and uh, see you there.
right, guys. So that was the video on the Banu Defender. Um, I hope I hope you liked it. Uh, it is a, really a beautiful ship. Um, the styling and the curves are just kind of out of this world, <laughs> literally. <laughs> I do like the lore behind the ship as well, that it is kind of cobbled together and... Uh, it's made up of all kinds of different civilizations, uh, different parts, you know, Xeon thrusters, and uh, it's it's adaptive for humans and Banu, and and it's got Tavarin shields, and who knows where the Singe cannons came from. So uh, I think it's I think it's super cool. Um, now, is it worth the price? Uh, so as a light fighter, lighter, lightish fighter. Um, I, I think it's a little bit overpriced, to be honest. I think it's probably worth closer to $150, um, not at the current price tag that it's at. But once the Banu Merchantman comes out, and, it's, and probably it's going to have a hanger made just for this, maybe that value goes up a little bit, kind of like the Carrick and the Pisces, even though the Pisces could go in so many different places. So... Just food for thought there, but I really want to hear about what you guys think about the Banu Defender. Do you like it? Do you uh, own one? Do you plan on getting one? What do you like about it specifically? What do you think about the Singe Cannons and their potential to be those instant hit scan uh, laser cannons um, when they used to do so much damage because they, you know, infinite ammo speed? What do you think about the shields? Uh, size two shields on a actually light fighter and, and good against ballistics. Uh, I'm curious to see your comments in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to just wrap up the video here as uh, we're hanging out at Port Olisar. <laughs> and uh, I thank you guys for watching so much. If you want to get more involved in the channel, please uh, head on over to the Discord. The link is in the description below. We have people all over the Discord, and uh, they they sometimes are active in the game, and sometimes they're just chatting. We have a lot of stuff in public chat. So head on over to the Discord, say hi, ask questions. Uh, we're about to start doing some community leads in the Discord and uh, moderators, and they'll be able to answer questions when Jawa and I are not available. Um, also keep an eye out for Jawa's videos. He's been doing a lot of travel guides lately. So if you need links to anything, you can head over to our website, fistandjawa.org. And that'll take you to the website, or you can check out the description. It has a bunch of links in it. And I think that wraps up the Banu Defender. Good ship, tad overpriced, but super agile. And of course, it's super fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am Fist25, and uh, as I say every time, if the fist don't get you, the lightning bolt will. Good night, Stan.